Welcome back, Screen Ranters. In the game, that is Hollywood. Sometimes the scenes are going to be cut from the final edit. Mostly it's done to save time. Unfortunately, this could mean some actors are kicked off of a film completely. Sometimes that includes really well-known performers. Today, we're going to look at the big names that ended up on the cutting room floor. Sometimes with more dramatic reasons than just to save time. Now listen to me very carefully. We kick off this beautiful list with one of the more recent actors to fall to an editor clicking delete with Avengers Endgame. During the testing process, the audience didn't really click with the scene involving Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark and Katherine Langford as Morgan Stark. In the scene, Tony is transported to Soul World where he makes the ultimate sacrifice. There, he meets up with a grown-up Morgan. She lets her father know how proud she is of him and that he can rest now. However, the emotional impact did not resonate with the test audience, more so considering the overall length of the cinematic epic, so in the bin the scene went. Prior to becoming a vampire and then Batman, Robert Pattinson was just getting his cinematic start all the way back in 2004. At the time, he was cast as the son of Reese Witherspoon's character Becky Sharp in the period drama Vanity Fair. However, the scenes he shot were taken out of the final cut. It wouldn't be until 2006 that he was actually in a big film when he was Cedric Diggory in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Fun fact, only seven years later from Vanity Fair's release, Pattinson would go from being Witherspoon's son to her love interest in 2011's Water for Elephants. Films can be very strange like that. Throughout the Harry Potter franchise, a number of the book's characters didn't make it to the silver screen. One of the biggest was Peeves the Poltergeist, yet he was set to appear in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone during 2001. The role was portrayed by comedy actor Rick Mayo. As for what happened, an interview by Mayall later on let us peek behind the curtain. After filming for three weeks, Mayall was told to go home. Whenever he was filming, the child actors would start laughing or corpsing as the lingo goes. After a month, Mayall was told his part was being removed completely. On top of this, director Christopher Columbus wasn't a fan of Peeves' design. On the plus side, Mayall was paid in full, even if he never made it on screen. Nine years before Sarah Michelle Gellar would go on to slay vampires left and right as Buffy Summers, she was cast in 1988's Funny Farm. It's a comedy film involving Chevy Chase in the lead role. The story is all about a couple that tire of living in the city and move to a farm in the countryside. Well, Gellar was cast as Elizabeth's student. Elizabeth is the wife of Chase's character. But in order to save time and to mold the film, all of Geller's scenes were snipped from the cinematic release. Considering it was Geller's first non-TV film, not the best start. The original version of 2011's Bridesmaids had Kristen Wiig's character, Annie, go on a blind, pretty terrible date. As the film was getting pretty long, mixed with the number of love interests, the blind date was removed. The date was with the Marvel icon, Paul Rudd. In this scene, Rudd and Wig's character had part of their date at an ice rink. Yet, during the fun, a kid accidentally skates over Rudd's finger. So, like any rational human, Rudd goes berserk with a tantrum. He runs around mocking people as well as using plenty of adult language at the children at the rink. At the height of his career in the early 80s, Harrison Ford was in one blockbuster after another. Well, in 1982, he was going to make a small cameo appearance in a cinematic classic, E.T. The Extraterrestrial. After Elliot had released all the frogs that were due to be dissected, he was meant to be sent to the principal's office. Although we never see his face, which was really weird why a principal would have his office so dark, but you can tell it's Ford due to the voice. However, the scene seemed out of place from the rest of the film. As such, it was cut and instead ended up in film lore. During the early 80s, two-time future Oscar winner Kevin Costner was just getting some experience in Hollywood. In 1983, a film he was in was being released. It was The Big Chill. It's all about a group of people meeting up after the passing of their friend Alex that Costner was portraying in the flashback scenes. The film contained a lot of famous faces, like Jeff Goldblum, and The Big Chill was even nominated for three Oscars. However, Costner was ruthlessly cut from the film. His only claim to fame of being in the film is that he briefly appears as Alex's body. What if we told you that Arnold Schwarzenegger was cut from 2003's Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines? You're probably staring at the screen and getting ready to leave some aggressive comments below. Well, hey, 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 he was. Kind of. Arnie was meant to play the role of Sergeant William Candy on top of being the Terminator. Ah! 
I'm Chief Master Sergeant William Candy. Candy was going to be shown as being the template for the T-800 model. The authorities in the scene even make a joke mocking the strange accent from Schwarzenegger, but the scene was deleted for some reason, even if it does answer an interesting question about the franchise's history. The Amazing Spider-Man films with Andrew Garfield heavily featured the relationship between Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy. During the second film in 2014, we were meant to see the emergence of Mary Jane Watson, played by Shailene Woodley from the Divergent series, Big Little Lies, and The Fault in Our Stars. The director of the film, Mark Webb, decided against putting MJ in. He wanted the film to focus solely on Parker and Stacy. The original plan probably would have introduced Mary Jane in the third film, but alas, the franchise was burnt to the ground and was rebooted under the MCU's watchful eye. Speaking of Spider-Man, a former webhead actor was set to make an appearance in a four-time winning Oscar film that was released in 2012, Life of Pi. Originally, Tobey Maguire was cast to be the writer that older Pi Patel is telling the story to, but not long into shooting, Maguire was kicked to the curb. The scenes were erased, and Rafe Spall was thrust into being the writer. The reason for Maguire's exit is said to be due to the one issue. Director Ang Lee thought that Maguire was too famous for the role compared to the other actors and would be distracting. Maguire issued a statement that he supported Lee's vision and found the film beautiful. During 2015, Black Mass dropped. It starred Johnny Depp as Whitey Bulger. Benedict Cumberbatch, Dakota Johnson, Kevin Bacon, and many other big names were also in the film. However, one of the big names attached to the project was missing. Cue the dramatic music. Sienna Miller was nowhere to be seen. She was cast as Catherine Gregg, the girlfriend of Bulger. In real life, Gregg helped the Bulger evade the police for 16 years, so it sounds like a pretty important role. Yet, director Scott Cooper didn't feel the same way. Instead, he removed Miller due to narrative choices. Cooper wanted to focus on Bulger being in Boston, rather than his time on the run with Gregg. After appearing in The Godfather Part 3, Andy Garcia was doing well for himself in the acting world. After all, that performance as Vincent Mancini earned Garcia an Oscar nomination. So with Garcia's star rising, he was cast in Dangerous Minds. He would play the love interest of Michelle Pfeiffer's character, Luann Johnson. Yet, when the film came out in 1995, Garcia was nowhere to be seen on the big screen. For whatever reason, the filmmakers decided that Garcia's character wasn't important enough for the film. Garcia even missed out on being in the music video of Coolio and LV's Gangsta's Paradise, since they used clips from Dangerous Minds as Pfeiffer stares intently at the rapper. In 2013, zombie nerds everywhere rejoiced at the release of World War Z. Lost's Matthew Fox was really happy to be cast in it. He stated his love of Max Brooks' book during interviews, and well, Fox found his role massively reduced. We see him briefly near the start when Fox, as a paratrooper, helps rescue Brad Pitt's character and his family. Originally, Fox's role would be aiding Karen Lane as Pitt's Jerry Lane is off around the world. The ending then has Fox become a villain after Jerry goes missing for months. As the ending didn't land with the test audience, it was reshot, which meant Fox's role was on the chopping block. Poor Michelle Monaghan. She is probably the reigning queen of actors becoming cut completely or having their role significantly reduced in films. Firstly, there was 2002's Unfaithful. Her role was vastly reduced at the end. Secondly, her role was once again reduced for 2004's The Bourne Supremacy. In 2005's Assyriana, she was snipped out completely. Also in 2005, her role as the half-demon Ellie in Constantine was pretty much thrown into the bin. Luckily, her career picked up, and now she's a Golden Globe-nominated actor for her work on True Detective. The Wu-Tang Clan member Ghostface goes by many names, one of which is Tony Starks. Yes, with an S at the end of the Iron Man character's name. Ghostface is a big fan of Marvel Stark, so much so that the rapper released an album titled Iron Man in 1996. So the filmmakers for the 2008 film wanted to have the rapper make a cameo. However, it was removed from the final edit. In the scene, Stark is enjoying a party in Dubai. He bumps into Ghostface and starts chatting. Shortly after, Ghostface presents Stark with two women. Stark then leaves with the women after dropping an innuendo. And that's probably why it was deleted. 1982's Fitzcarraldo was just a filming nightmare. To start with, they were filming in the Amazon jungle within Brazil and Peru. As such, the production was also attacked by an indigenous tribe that badly injured a number of crew. 
the cinematographer injured his hand while shooting the film's climax, and then he had surgery for two and a half hours without anesthesia due to the remote location. The original leading actor, Jason Robards, fell ill six weeks into production and dropped out. During the wait for the new lead, Mick Jagger, who was also in the film, had to go off on tour with the Rolling Stones. As such, director Werner Herzog deleted all of the footage of Jagger's role, as well as removed Jagger's character entirely. When news broke that Jenna Malone from Hunger Games and Sucker Punch was going to be in 2016's Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, DC fans squealed in excitement at the role that she would take. Would she be Barbara Gordon as Batgirl? Or perhaps either Stephanie Brown or Carrie Kelly as Robin? Well, none of the above, as Malone was not in the original cinematic version of the film at all. In order to save time, Malone was removed from the original release. It would not be until the extended version arrived in select cinemas and on Blu-ray that we saw the actual part that Malone had. She played Jeanette Clyburn, the lead scientist and star expert at Star Labs. In 1984's Terminator, Kyle Reese sacrificed himself to save Sarah Connor. Even though the character would appear numerous times in the franchise for the original actor, Michael Bean, the original film was his only appearance. But if 1991's Terminator 2 Judgment Day went differently, Bean would have reprised his role. In fact, he actually shot the scenes. In these events, Bean's Kyle would appear to Sarah Connor during a dream. The sequence was taken out due to pacing reasons and that James Cameron wasn't sure if the audience would recognize or remember Kyle's importance, but the scene was included in future releases of the extended edition. 2009's mockumentary Bruno, starring Sasha Baron Cohen, included a lot of celebrity cameos, one of which was removed for what happened in the real world at the time. In this scene, Bruno is interviewing Latoya Jackson with a man covering his modesty with sushi for lunch because, hey, why not? Eventually, after receiving a number of disrespectful comments and Bruno stealing her brother's, Michael Jackson's phone number, LaToya calls over her manager and quickly departs. As the film was approaching release, news broke of Michael Jackson's passing. The studio behind the film explained the scene was removed out of respect for the Jackson family. As the three-time nominated actor Viggo Mortensen was just making his name in the film industry, he was cast in Woody Allen's The Purple Rose of Cairo in 1985. Mortensen stated that he was surprised at getting the part since he had a disappointing audition. He turned up to the shoot but had no idea what his part was. Mortensen was instructed to improvise during a house party. After filming, he felt it went great. Mortensen then told his friends and family that he was going to be in the film. Yet, when the film was released, Mortensen realized he was cut. On top of this, he wasn't even in the credits. Terrence Malick's The Thin Red Line was nominated for seven Oscars upon its release in 1998. Since the film was nearly three hours long, many scenes had to be deleted, which included the only scenes of a number of actors. In an interview, Rourke stated that the deleted scenes were some of the best work that he's ever done in his career. Rourke claims that backstage politics played a vital role in his removal, but Malick has a history of cutting many actors' screen time down or completely for his films. The year 1990 had Warren Beatty star and direct a Dick Tracy film. One of the names attached to the project was Sean Young playing Tess Trueheart, the love interest for Stacy. After only a few days of shooting, Young was replaced by Glenn Headley. All of the scenes shot with Young were deleted and reshot. Young stated in interviews that no one gave her a reason for her dismissal. She wasn't having the best luck in the industry at that time either. Back in 1989, Young was set to be Vicky Vale in Batman. However, she had to drop out due to an injury. Then, in 1992, as Batman Returns was being made, Young walked through the Warner Brothers lot to find Burton while dressed as Catwoman. Sadly, it didn't work out. 2011's The Muppets film contained so many cameos by celebrities, such as Donald Glover, Emily Blunt, Mickey Rooney, Dave Grohl, and so on. Honestly, that's pretty impressive in itself. Well, in order to save time, a number of the cameos were cut from the final edit, which included Golden Globe winner Ricky Gervais. Yeah, even though his involvement in the film was announced to the press. Eh, whoops. Also, Billy Crystal, Rob Corddry, and Danny Trejo joined Gervais on the cutting room floor. Luckily for Gervais, it all worked out when he was cast in a leading role in 2014's Muppets Most Wanted. 
pushing it at just under two hours long. Oliver Stone had to get his scissors out to trim the fat from 1994's Natural Born Killers. Unfortunately for Ashley Judd, she was on the receiving end of the snip. Because they fear what I say is dangerous. Where does it all end? She had the role of Grace Mulberry. Mulberry would appear as one of the survivors of an attack by Mickey and Mallory. She was in the courtroom as a witness to the Knox's violent spree. During proceedings, Mickey would cross-examine her, since he was representing himself, eventually leading to him attacking Mulberry with a pencil. Altogether, Judd had her nine minutes of screen time taken from the film. We finish off with another Oliver Stone film, erasing whole characters from his work. This time we have 2012's Savages. Starring Aaron Taylor Johnson, Taylor Kitsch, and Blake Lively, the film focuses on pot farmers facing off against the Mexican cartel. Lively's character was meant to have a mother in the flick. After all, the mother is present in the book the film is adapted from. The motherly role was taken by Uma Thurman, but alas, she was missing from the film's release. Stone stated that even though Uma played the role beautifully, that since the role didn't impact the main plot, it had to be cut to save time. And that's a wrap. Which actor do you wish was in the final cut of the film? State your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more, please like, share, and subscribe. All those actions, they really help us out. Finally, thanks for joining us today. See ya.